everybody, Backyard Bullion here. Welcome to episode 129 of In Focus Friday. Now, last week we had a look at an incredible Aztec themed gold coin, the 20 peso, the 20 peso. Incredible coin, love it. Incredibly popular in last week's episode as well. If you haven't seen it, it's well worth a look. As always, the links are down in the description below. Now, there was no vote last week. We've suspended voting for a couple of weeks because we've got some really cool things to crack on with. Today we're going to be looking at a 1,325 year old silver Durham, which is an incredible gift which was given to me, but more on that in a moment. There's no vote at the end of this episode, but we are going to be featuring something pretty cool next week, so make sure you stick around for another sneak peek at what we're going to look at. So, this, this is my first ancient coin uh, that I have now in my... I don't want to call it a stack because this is very much, if I can even pick it up, this is very much a collector's item, a collector's coin. You can see I'm holding it with the gloves here. I don't really want to touch it with the bare hands. And uh, this is something I will honestly admit I know not a great deal about. I've done a little bit of loose research from the information that I've been told about this uh, coin. Now, I'll tell you how I came about having this coin. Uh, I was recently uh, in London and I was meeting a customer who'd ordered uh, a large amount of handful silver and it was more economically uh, safe to uh, visit him in London and uh, hand deliver it. And we were talking at length and a very nice chap uh, about coins and about you know what, uh, what we both like to collect. And he has a very extensive collection of old ancient uh, Muslim coins and coins from this era of the world or era of history and he got out uh, this coin to show me and I was sort of blown away by it, it was really incredible uh, and then he just said that I, I could keep it and that's, I tried to tell him no, I, I said this is you know too generous um, but he wouldn't take no for an answer and, uh, and gave me this coin and I'm indebted to you, thank you so much for it, it is incredible and I'm learning more about it, learning more about the uh, the history of these coins as we go. A little bit of uh, what I know I can share with you guys today, but I want to find out more about this and, uh, and you know, find out a little bit more about the history of everything as well. So this is called a silver dirham. It is a coin from uh, the kind of Muslim uh, caliphate world of the, and this particular coin dates 1,325 years back through history. Um, and it is from the reign of a uh, of a leader called Abdul Al Malik, and I hope I'm pronouncing that that right. And I'm going to really struggle with this next one. He was uh, the leader of the sixth Umayyad Caliphate, I think, or Caliph, uh, and he ruled from 685 A.D. until his death in I think, 705 A.D. I'm taking some of this information off good old Wikipedia, um, and this particular coin is I've. I'm told anyway, dated to 695 AD. Now, I don't know um, how that is dated from there. I mean, I, I'm taking the, uh, the, the gentleman who uh, gifted me this coin's word, I suppose, uh, to the information about this coin. Uh, I have no reason to doubt him. So uh, I don't know anything about it though. I, well, I think I'm uh, holding it the, uh, the right way up if I just um, get it that way around. I think that is the correct orientation for this side of the coin and uh, we've got obviously kind of the uh, the lettering there. These, this design, I've, I've done some research, I've looked around uh, and I've seen that this particular kind of design and lettering on the coins uh, from this kind of geographic region of the world uh, stays kind of the same for a significant large amount of time throughout history. So uh, it, it, you know, this time of the world, coins were made by individual coin makers. They weren't uh, standardized, they weren't on massive production lines that came out from uh, you know, factories, they really were just uh, you know, the, the members of society who had the means, the skills and the experience to work with metal, to create metal, in this case silver, uh, and create these coins. Uh, they basically did them by hand, completely hammered, so they would cut the, the little rounds out, the circles out of the sheet metal that they would produce, and then they would hammer using the dies, they'd hand make the dies, which is why uh, these Die, or why the coins kind of vary in the way that they look. Obviously, I don't have any others to show you, but how they vary somewhat and they uh, they have that different look. So they would have basically a big block that they would sit the blank on, 
and then they would take their uh, their sort of second die, which was another big block, and they'd sit it on top, and then they'd hammer uh, that top bit down, and then it would imprint on both sides. And this is an incredibly thin coin, as you can see. Uh, so it's an incredible feat of, I suppose, like engineering to get the silver work to that thickness, uh, and it's it's really really amazing. And considering this coin only weighs about two point, I think it's like two point three grams or two point four grams. Uh, it's really, really quite something to behold in the flesh, let me tell you. Uh, and yeah, so these, you know, they're, they're obviously really old school. Uh, you know, I, I, I'm a fledgling stamper of silver myself. I don't know the purity of this silver. I haven't actually really been able to find out exactly what the purities are. I guess that the purities may well have like varied as well. They, you know, back in the 600s, 700s AD, there wasn't necessarily the kind of the standardized, uh, you know, 92.5% silver. It's definitely an alloy of silver, it's not pure silver. Um, so what alloy it is, I don't know, it could be 80%. Um, of course, that's, you know, the part of the world where, or that's sort of the part of history where silver coins were coins and they were that precious metal for a reason. Uh, so we're harking back through history, but I absolutely love this. It's absolutely gorgeous. Now I have plans for this coin. I, as I said, I want to find out more about it. I want to uh, learn more about this history of the coin. It's my first ever ancient coin. I don't have any other ancient coins in my collection, in my stack. It's not really something I've ever kind of focused on. And, and the main reason why is because I don't know very much about that, uh, that sort of genre of coin, that history of coin. I, I don't know what I'm looking for. And if I saw this coin at a uh, coin fair or something like that, I'd admire it, and I think it was absolutely glorious and lovely, uh, but I wouldn't necessarily want to go and spend uh, a significant amount of money on it because I, you know, I've been told that this coin is worth a couple of hundred pounds. I am incredibly like humbled by the generosity of this uh, of this gentleman to gift me this coin, and I want to do it justice. It means a lot to me uh, to be getting a gift like this from somebody. So it's going to be going off for uh, con uh, well, I say conservation. It's going to be going off for coin grading. Uh, I'm going to send it to Uncle Numistaka to send off to NGC to be put into a slab for a couple of reasons. First of all, uh, to protect it, because it's, as you can see, an incredibly delicate, very old coin, and I don't want to just bung it in a coin folder. Uh, you know, it means a lot to me in the sense that it's, you know, been gifted to me by a customer, and we had, uh, you know, such a, a good kind of meeting and conversation that I just felt like it was it's the right thing to do is not just to kind of uh, chuck it in a drawer somewhere or chuck it in a in a coin folder somewhere and just leave it. So I want to have it in a slab. I want to um, preserve that uh, and make sure that it's not going to get damaged. Also, NGC will be able to uh, tell hopefully some more information about it, whether they can identify the, uh, you know, all the particulars about the coin. And that will, of course, be really, really important for me to see. Uh, so yeah, I'm very, very excited by this. Thank you so much. It will be featured again on my channel at some point. I just don't know exactly when because it's going to be going off to uh, Numistaka and then he will be sending it through to uh, NGC. So it'll probably be at least, gosh, I think six, seven, eight weeks before this is back uh, and graded. I don't know what it will grade. Uh, it's probably not going to be any kind of <laughs> MS grade uh, or anything like that, um, but it's still a very good example. And even if it comes back with some kind of details grade or whatever, if it's in a slab at least, then you know, I'm fine with that. I really, it's not about the grade for me on this. It's not about grading it to make value, to make money or anything. Um, you know, it's it's not something I'm going to be parting with. Uh, this is a really special thing to keep for me uh, and Mrs. Backyard Bullion. And we're just, we're quite amazed by it. So there we go. If you enjoy that coin, please do let me know. Please do comment with your thoughts on it. If you know anything of information about it, more information about this coin, about the history of that coin, then please, of course, let me know as well. It'd be greatly appreciated. Now, the next week's items are a very cool thing. So we featured the, or you can hear them in the background, you featured, uh, we featured, sorry, the dragon, the Aztec dragon, um, Quetzalcoatl, I think it was called. Uh, a couple of months ago when they were released from Golden State Mint via Provident Metals and the second release is now out. I've imported some for resale here in the UK and they have come through and I'm really excited to show them both in silver and copper. So that is what we're going to be looking at next week, finding out a little bit more about that series because it's shaping up to be a pretty funky series for sure, certainly is very popular. 
Otherwise, put a thumbs up on this video if you liked it and if you liked this, uh, this coin, it's really fantastic. I absolutely love it. And if you'd like to see future episodes of InFocus Friday, especially next week's with these, then make sure you hit that subscribe button if you're not already subscribed and hit the alarm bell if you would like to get a notification when those videos go live. Otherwise, that is all I have to say. Thank you one and all for watching. I hope you have a great weekend ahead. And as always, please make sure you like, share, comment and subscribe for more.